And I want to end tonight's show with Myanmar. It's been 33 days since the coup, 33 days of protests, violence, killings and state brutality. At least 64 people have been killed. Dead bodies keep turning up at hospitals. Nighttime curfews have been imposed. Internet shutdowns have become frequent. The army has taken control of state television. Soldiers are issuing threats, death threats through TikTok. Fighter jets are hovering over cities. Tanks are rolling on the streets. There are power outages. Myanmar's UN ambassador has been fired and nobody knows how the ousted leader Aung San Suu Kyi is doing. Our thoughts go out to the people of Myanmar who despite this endless turmoil have not wavered one inch in their fight to restore democracy. This is not a demonstration. This is a funeral. These people are not protesters, they're mourners. They're here to pay their respects to Arkur Mo, a 25-year-old university student who died saving his friend from getting shot. Arkur Mo was shot in the heart. Arkur Mo is one of the many young students who have been killed in police firing. A total of 64 people have died just in the last 33 days. Many of them were in their teens. Like 19-year-old Kial Sin, who was shot in the head by police officials. She has become a national hero in her death. Thousands attended her funeral as her friends filed past her coffin singing the popular revolutionary song we won't forget until the end of the world. The message this song carries is reverberating across Myanmar. These images are from Andalay. These protesters are building barricades to impede police officials from killing them. In Yangon, protesters are using everything they can get their hands on. From barbed wire to traditional clothes. Some are laying traps by putting nails inside coconuts. Because the army is sparing no one. They're trying to break up demonstrations with tear gas, bullets and fire bombs. On Friday, they reportedly cut the electricity. Every major city in Myanmar witnessed a blackout. The army says it was due to a system breakdown. The protesters say it was intentional. The military is choking every mode of communication. It has introduced curfew-style nightly internet cuts. For 17 consecutive nights, the internet is shut down post 1 a.m. At the same time, the military is trying to get access to government funds. According to a new report, the army generals attempted to move about $1 billion held at the Federal Reserve Bank of New York after the coup. This is being seen as a bid to limit the impact of international sanctions. The U.S. government says it will continue to block all such efforts by the Myanmar army. Washington has also urged Beijing to play a constructive role in helping the people of Myanmar. Social media giants are also doing their bit. After Facebook banned pages belonging to the Myanmar army, YouTube has removed five channels run by the military and deleted multiple videos. The Myanmar army may be getting cornered virtually, but meaningful action on the ground against it is still missing. Bureau report, we own. World is one. Vion is now available in your country. Download the app now and get all the news on the move.